Joining us on this panel, we have with us Mr. Arpan Biswas, Vice President, Marketing and Business, Housejoy, Arjuna Tiwari Naidu, Director, Content and Communications at Upgrad, Ajahn Sethia, Vice President, Marketing at Mintra, Rahul Gandhi, CMO India and UAE at ID Foods, Manoj Agarwal, Co-Founder, Chief Product and Operating Officer at Zozo Day. And to chair this uh, session, we have with us Mr. Ramil Amin, Senior Editor at Exchange for Media. A very warm welcome to all of you. Thank you, Thank you so much, Kathy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Kathy. Uh, I hope I'm audible. Uh, so, uh, yes, you are. Uh, Thank you so much. Uh, so our topic is uh, technology in the future of business. And uh, I want to begin uh, and I want to go to here. Yeah. Question is, uh, uh, sorry, if you can hear a little bit of noise at the back end, if, if somebody could address it. Uh, my first question to you, Mr. Gandhi, is that uh, we have seen the role of tech in an unprecedented way uh, in the over the last nine months, uh, uh, tell me how are brands uh, using and evolving to adapt to a new use of tech? It has been used, of course, very profusely, but there's a new way of engaging with tech. Can you tell me how have you been engaging with tech over the last uh, nine months, especially during this period of high dependence of, on tech? Sure, thank you, thank you, Royal. Uh, I you're right. I mean, COVID-19 uh, has been uh, forcing, uh, you know, consumers, brands, everyone to change their habit, you know, uh, and uh, most of the companies are having to rework uh, their marketing approaches. Uh, a lot of people are stuck at home. You know, we are seeing uh, uh, models like uh, Big Basket and Amazon experience massive uh, spike in demand. Um, now, businesses have two choices here at in such a stage, you know, either be adapt or be left in the dust. Uh, before uh, COVID-19, you know, our everyday life was going to work, going to school, uh, going to the gym, the grocery store, malls, restaurant, movies. Right. But nowadays, the right. consumers are, what they're doing is they're adapting to uh, working in front of Zoom, laptops, uh, shopping online, uh, exercising through a virtual teacher, and mostly, you know, spending time in isolation. And uh, the digital experience have, uh, you know, abruptly replaced uh, these in-person experiences. Um, however, uh, you know, once the crisis passes, I think uh, some of the things will go back to normal, but many things will be uh, forever different. And um, the brands uh, that I think will come out on the top are the ones that are, uh, you know, ready to meet this new set of demands, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and uh, new ways of uh, finding uh, uh, to reach consumers during the marketing is during an economic crisis is something that has been done uh, very well before, you know. Uh, incidentally, you know, if we, the, the last time this a pandemic was as big was uh, during the Great Depression, I think the swine flu, right? I think it was swine flu, and uh, uh, the uh, Procter and Gamble at that point of time, along with most companies, were looking down the barrel and uh, with serious uh, financial hardships. Yeah, many of the competitors were uh, cutting advertising and essentially going dark. Yeah, but at the same point of time, PNG at that time decided to completely change the playbook, and uh, they. Uh, while many people were laid off and a lot of people were spending time at home, much like what is happening right now, PNG started uh, at that point of time. I think they were radio broadcasts, uh, yeah, and uh, a new messaging, and they they were marketing soap at that point of time, and that's where soap right. opera as a you know thing got created. Incidentally, at ID, we have released uh, uh, five films over the last six months. Yeah, so we've done five films in the last four years. Yeah, we've upped our uh, marketing game as well. We've we know that, you know, at this point of time, uh, uh, the biggest shift in uh, consumer is going to be that, uh, you know, the content marketing will have to have a lot of emphasis on digital experiences. And uh, the name of the game will be to, you know, uh, deliver a real time connection with the uh, bigger importance to meeting consumers on the screens that they are spending time on. Uh, so we have, in fact, uh, you know, uh, focused a lot of effort on uh, building content, not only to advertise, but also to, um, you know, uh, actually uh, address what the consumer need is at this point of time right now. You know, what are the, uh, so the questions that we ask ourselves in our weekly meeting is what do our consumers need from us in this point of time? What are the challenges that, that they need to overcome? So for a food brand, what they need right now is a lot of variety in food. You know, most people are bored of eating the stuff that they've been continuously doing at home. And what are the challenges that they need to overcome? 
they they need to make sure that the food that they're eating is healthy fresh nutritious at the same point of time does variety so a lot of our content marketing effort is is going towards uh, creating recipes and uh, not which are not only authentic but also healthy and then we also spend time thinking as to where the consumer is consuming this content uh, not only us and i think a lot of brands have done some fantastic work at this point of time so i think i i, I was reading about viator viator has had uh, virtual tours of the world that they are you know sponsoring right now i mean uh, talk about being innovative and in, in a tough market the hotel and the travel industry is the worst hit so i guess uh, uh, there's there's no other choice but to reinvent like uh, png did like viator is doing and a lot of our industries are down in the dumps but at the same point of time uh, reinvention is possibly uh, a necessity right now and, and uh, there's no two ways right. about it right mr satya coming to you uh, i mean of course i mean there has been a certain seamless uh, kind of connect with customers from your end but tell me in the last 9 months specifically was there any kind of a new addition innovation from the tech side that you had to kind of consider looking at the way uh, the market panned out the way consumer behavior panned out yeah of course actually we have had uh, you know learning of a lifetime i would say in the last 7 months so uh, we were at a phase where we had no business when the lockdown started to a phase where we were doing better than what we had uh, anticipated uh, you know and and that was the silver lining because a lot of people actually moved to e-commerce as uh, uh, rahul also mentioned and i think uh, see for us a uh, uh, couple of things happened uh, where technology played a big role to answer your specific question first of right. all the whole consumer sentiment around uh, getting bored while sitting at home and finding meaningful avenues to engage you know on the platform that they were used to going to uh, so that was the first sentiment that we picked on uh, we launched uh, something uh, which was our own content destination uh, with with you know content uh, coming in globally around what's happening in fashion and a lot of indian content on fashion inspiration and fashion education uh, which was mintra studio that we launched on the mintra app uh and that became uh, a sort of a good past time for a lot of users to at least learn about fashion because india is still at a stage where we are very nascent in our understanding of fashion and we look for inspiration from across the world or from the sellers uh, or the experts uh, so we got in a lot of influencers uh, and build that ecosystem and then use technology to provide a seamless experience where people could not just watch content uh, as well as you know they could immediately shop that look right uh, 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 with the e-commerce uh, platform available for them so that's the first big tech innovation and you know that has uh, scaled up very well for us the second was uh, i think there have been a bunch of other tech innovations uh, it won't be just one bucket of them but uh, as we expanded right a lot of tier 2 tier 3 smaller town in india started to come to e-commerce for the first time right and when Uh, a new customer or a new user comes to an e-commerce platform or a digital platform for that matter their understanding their expectations as well as their uh, you know appreciation of the consumer journey that you have to go through to make the purchase is uh, slightly more simplistic slightly less nuanced compared to let's say an evolved metro user or a tier one user so we had to simplify some of these consumer tech flows we had to think keeping the customer in mind uh you know as to how they would start their journey on mintra and how they would end to be go to the purchase uh what kind of creative communication that needs to happen and how can technology uh, sort of bring about some of these things in a seamless manner uh throughout the app journey right so that is a there were a bunch of tech innovations that happened there which helped us sort of uh, ride through this uh this 7 8 month period so far right 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 coming to you mr baswas uh, what has been your story when it comes to the uh, use of tech as far as a new business environment is concerned did you, uh, did you also go through a certain innovation a new kind of uh, uh, tech uh, innovation to kind of adapt to this new world order thanks to uh, rohel uh, yes and i would say no changes did not happen just after covid we have been trying to change the way uh, someone constructs their home that's one part of our business the other being how people maintain their homes right so uh, that started well before covid i would say around one and a half year back when we have been trying to change the entire process of how a home construction mm-hmm. is done so starting from the sales process where the customer will not visit our office he will get the entire immersive experience in from right uh, 
Uh, simple things like earlier is to push customers to visit our office during COVID. If you ask me what happened, what just happened post COVID, we ensured that all the meetings moved online, all the transactions moved online, all the information sharing moved online. Uh, we have started doing AR videos of the homes, how they will look, right? So a lot of things have happened on that. On the tracking bit as well, given that uh, because of COVID, they could not step out of their homes to check uh, how the new construction is coming up. We have ensured CCTV cameras in their uh, where the work is happening. We have also ensured that the entire uh, process, be it payment, uh, be it the materials, whatever is going to their sites, is being tracked online. And that has given a lot of uh, that has helped them a lot and given them a lot of confidence on the brand. And these are a few changes we have done uh, recently in the last few months to uh, work around COVID. Right, right. Uh, Ma'am, Miss Naidu, uh, coming to you. Sorry. You want to add to it, Mr. Mr. Biswas? Are you still? Yeah, no, 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 no. Okay, okay. I'm sorry, uh, Miss Tiwari. Uh, sorry, Miss Miss Naidu. Coming to you. Uh, uh, tell me, though there is a lot of use of tech, the prevalence in uh, use of tech is very heavy at uh, the kind of business you do. But in the last uh, uh, nine months, if I have to ask you, tell me about the uh, new uh, additions or uh, a new kind of evolution that you saw from the tech end that you had to adopt. Uh, to kind of continue with the customer connect that you had. Yeah, and both are right. It's both Tiwari and Naidu. So you were not wrong at any point. So just say. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, uh, at tech, and that's where what I represent being in a grad, um, is generally compared to what demonetize uh, to uh, financial, um, the fintech sector. Uh, for as 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 against the whole demonetization right what what demonetization did to fintech is what corona is doing to edtech that's generally the 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 talk in the town mm -hmm. uh, so i'll talk from the personal point of view and uh, the journey that upgrad has taken so before corona before the pandemic um, we were saying the similar thing that lifelong learning mm -hmm. is important upskilling is needed uh, the technological disruption will make you irrelevant. But that was never the scare the way it is right now. So uh, if we thought that technology was a disruptor, uh, here was Corona or the pandemic. So from the ed tech sector as a, as, as a point, case in point, and from upgrad as specific, I think we had a great run and we continue to have a great run. Um, the kind of... Uh, um, interest and awareness that no money could have bought uh, is here sadly so but that's the reality the other thing is that i don't everybody says that technology is a disruptor i feel technology is a creator just like this year 2020 and i really hope 2021 will be a better year but if you look at it as a year of learning uh, it has taught us so many things look at all of us interacting like this we never thought if you're going to uh, do our business the way it is, uh, say, sitting in our own homes or comfort of our own home. So it's a big, uh, big teacher. Uh, so that that's one part I wanted to kind of call out. The other part is what you asked that how has technology helped us? Well, absolutely 100%. Right. And our content range, and because these are the two topics that we are talking about technology and content. Mm -hmm. If you look at our range of content, right from the brand content, uh, to the in-app content, to the pedagogy-led content. All of this has to be curated. All of this has to be developed and all of it has to be delivered in a timely fashion. Um, right. Right, from, right from the whole Aage Ki Soch, which was a anthem, which we did it with various artists. And you know we had Radhika Apte and all of uh, them, uh, which again, we shot uh, remotely. That, that, was, that was a viral thing to the pedagogy content that we deliver to our learners every single day, remotely producing, remotely curating, and remotely delivering through across right. the team has been a learning of sorts for us. So in short, uh, I'll just, uh, for this point, I'll say that for a grad and for the whole ed tech as a segment, it has been uh, a great learning journey as we continue to make our learners sharper, smarter, and relevant. But if you look right. at other companies, other segments, uh, and I'm being part of a lot of webinars, I see so many innovations coming out of, of this pandemic, which are so need-based. And our life is never going to be reversed anymore. 
things will right. change, but uh, there are some habits that are formed permanently. So that's my stance on this. Right, exactly. It takes 21 days and we're well into nine months. Mr. Agarwal, uh, tell me your side, uh, your uh, story of innovation um, that you have undergone over the last uh, nine months specifically. Yeah, thanks, uh, Rohel. Uh, so I, I am a different uh, company from the rest of the panel here. Uh, we are a B2B SaaS company, and uh, I can see most of most of the companies here are uh, from the consumer brands. Uh, now, uh, most of the B2B uh, companies, especially the uh, tech technology companies and SaaS companies, they they have uh, seen these entire nine months as a right. big boon. Uh, because the entire world uh, is now glued to uh, digital media and uh, uh, forcefully people don't have any choice but to adopt uh, digital transformation in a lot of processes which they do uh, within their company, whether it is within uh, their employees or whether it is uh, with their clients or consumers or whether it is right. for their suppliers. And... Uh, and then uh, we we as a company we cater to a couple of personas. So we we have one of the products which cater to employee motivation and engagement. Uh, another product which uh, caters to uh, sales team uh, motivation, sales team uh, uh, performance, and the third product which is into rewards and incentives. Now each of the products uh, somehow has been a perfect use case uh, during these nine months, where uh, especially when the human motivation levels are abysmal. Uh, because of different reasons in the pandemic, people are not connected with each other. They don't have face time. Uh, their motivation level levels are low, and that is when even any small intervention from any digital media or any digital tool, which can help elevate their motivation levels, which can help recognize the efforts which they are putting. So, for example, if your employees are putting day in day out. Uh, on 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 work, uh, despite all the problems which they have at home, maybe health problems, maybe problems where they don't have the right uh, working environment at home. So even right. small recognition, yeah, small recognition, small uh, pat on the back, those kind of things really motivate them. Uh, similarly, uh, each one of you come from uh, brands where sales is very very important. And doing sales uh, during this lockdown where the budgets are very low with, with both the consumers as well as the companies themselves is a nightmare. And if you talk to any sales guys, I, I guess uh, apart from the healthcare professionals and the public uh, services guys, sales guys are under the heaviest pressure because, I mean, right. people are looking for revenues to run the companies and sales guys are under pressure. So how can you really accelerate sales without kind of breaking them down? And right. uh, any any such tool has been really helping companies to kind of uh, kind of uh, keep their sales intact despite uh, tough times. And one more right. thing, which uh, we are, one more uh, very interesting uh, thing, which is happening in the global uh, uh, scenario, especially from a global perspective, uh, and as uh, Archana mentioned, that that is going to stay is. The mm. world has become, though the world is disconnected physically, but the world has become flatter and flatter. So today right. uh, we had an we had an inertia uh, that I can't sell in the U.S. unless I am present in the U.S. physically, or I can't sell right. in let's say a small town unless I am physically present there. But that that inhibition has gone away suddenly. Uh, both both the brands as well as the consumer is now receptive to online buying and selling right, and right. that is that is a welcome step for any company which is into digital way of selling and buying so right. these are a couple of positive steps uh, in these tough times and uh, yeah perfect perfect i want to come to you mr gandhi you know uh, these uh, 9 months have also been uh, a period of deep thinking and kind of introspecting about the way we do conduct business. The strategies have been reversed. A lot of changes have happened. Tell me from your uh, standpoint, uh, when it comes to the use of technology and content to target audiences, uh, are there some new learnings? Is there a new, uh, you know, kind of science at work, a new playbook at work that you have observed? 
Yeah, from a, actually a, more than a technology point of view, I think uh, the right content strategy during the pandemic yeah, is, is very important. Uh, I think uh, as a as a brand, ID has always uh, stood for uh, you know the the mother archetype, you know somebody who's offering comfort food, uh, you know, and it's uh, our focus has always been on uh, a positive brand messaging and positioning, uh, because uh, you know uh, when when we do come out of this pandemic, uh, people will have a sense of uh, your business, you know, the sense may be negative or positive depending on the calls that any brand takes during this point of time. Uh, what you choose to do as a business uh, right now will actually shape your business in the future. And we've seen lots of brands, not lots, but maybe a few brands get it wrong during the pandemic. It's, it's very important that, uh, you know, while we're disseminating our, our, uh, our uh, you know, our, our campaigns or uh, our marketing efforts, that we don't look at somebody who's taking advantage. You know? uh, right. Marketing still needs to happen, but uh, to avoid taking advantage of this situation to score a business profit at all costs, We've seen some people get it horribly wrong in the in the recent year. So while yeah, keeping your business afloat is 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 crucial, but it should not come at the cost of you know a, a human emotion or a human life. It may get your good boost initially, but it'll hurt your uh, brand in the long term. And uh, I think also very important is to actually, uh, especially for a brand who wants to embody the the caregiver archetype, is to offer support and help. I, I remember um, around I think it was. April 1st or second week when all of us were lining outside grocery shops you know, and we had uh, no food. We, we had no idea where we'll get our next meal from because there was a sudden sharp, huge, humongous lockdown. And, uh, you know, all of us were standing outside grocery shops at, and people were actually looking for food right now. That's the time when ID actually saw a big spike in sales. And uh, we got a lot of consumers writing to us, you know, that uh, my mother is in, uh, is in, is in Delhi and I'm in Bangalore. You know, uh, I don't know how to cook. Where can I find your food? I, I think it was April 12th or 13th at that point of time. ID was one of the first brand who launched this store finder kind of a thing where people could go on the website. And, uh, you know, we are a company who actually delivers to the store daily. We have a daily service model. And our entire uh, distribution infrastructure is owned by ourselves. So we don't have a distributor. What that allows us is that we know each store's stock on hand and how much we are selling to them. Uh, we decided to actually offer help to the consumers. We actually started updating all this data on the web page, mm -hmm. on our website. I said, go, if, you, if you're really, you know, you, some of us, uh, the guys were really desperate and they were, and some of them were old also, you know. Some of the old people could not go to stores. The young ones like us could still stand outside stores for us. But some of them, uh, uh, you know, were old, not even uh, healthy enough to go, go travel outside. So one thing we did is we said that, okay, in, in a circle, in a radius of one or two kilometers, you want to find your store this is the store and this much batter this much paranda this much paneer this much curd this much coconut we've delivered to them please go find right. them and then the second thing we actually started doing is we like okay you know there, there are lots of covid hotspots where we actually need to directly go to the consumers so in right. sometime in may we started going to apartments directly yeah uh, lots of people stopped us from doing that saying that what are you doing your distribution cost is going to kill you but uh, lots of people also did not think that when you sell directly to apartments, you're actually selling at MRP, which means that the 20% retail margin is, is saved and you can actually reinvest into the... Uh, so we, we started doing what a brand should have done at that point of time, which is to offer support and help, uh, you know, tell the consumer where the food is, when you're the short of food, deliver it to the doorstep in case they're not willing to step out of the door. And, and no matter what content strategy you build, always factor in that, you know, there are always going to be ways and help the technology can help you support people. Uh, it can come in this form. It can also come in uh, you know, ways of uh, making donation to support your local businesses or offering time to educate them like Upgrad is doing. I think it's important to be empathetic at this point of time, as well as uh, balance op optimism and sensitivity. Right, 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 right. Uh, Mr. Sethi, I want to come to you uh, with the similar question that when it comes to the use of content strategy and technology, uh, have the practices been say, same? Of course not. I mean, before COVID and now where we are. And what were the key learnings of what, what is the right mix that you have found to target uh, consumers effectively and build that, you know, consumer centric approach in this current milieu we are living in? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, see, for me, the biggest learning has been uh, every content campaign uh, needs to start with a clear objective, right? And objectives can be different across campaigns. 
I think one of the mistakes to avoid is to have a common objective of user engagement and just apply it left, right, and center across everything. Um, and and I think the world is extremely dynamic right now. Uh, the the contexts are very dynamic. So just to help you explain with an example, content could mean anything, right? It's not just about you know great video content coming out, but even simple content where you're trying to sell a product to the user, uh, uh, and, and a very different on the other. Uh, end of the spectrum, uh, something which is meant to inspire the user to start considering you, you know, as a as a platform or as a brand, right? And then the purchase decision may happen maybe right. after a few months or a few weeks, right? So, so depending on the objective, I think the content has to be first charted accordingly. Uh, and inspiration content uh, would look very different uh, compared to, you know, let's say a sale content, because both of them have to work at different parts of the funnel uh, and lead the uh, objective. The second part of that is the right personalization and targeting. Uh, with digital, it allows us now, you know, to really, really micro segment users at uh, very minute levels and be able to smartly give the message based on what you know about them already, right? So I think these topics have been discussed uh, to death uh, across forums, but but I think the beauty of this is to be able to practice that and execute that at scale uh, and create an operational uh, machinery which can execute creative creation at, at scale because that is where i see a lot of people uh, getting challenged you know eventually you end up having a very limited set of creatives and then you have to target let's say 5000 customer cohorts uh, and that becomes very difficult right so so one how do you use technology to automate a lot of this creative creation that's where technology plays a very important role second how do you use technology to be able to take quick decisions on what is best for that customer based on the signals you have received in the recent past and be able to integrate your your analytic systems along with your uh, decision making systems along with your creative systems right so there's a lot of operational work at an organizational level that needs to be done to be able to get to that level of targeting and i think there is still a long way to go for a lot of organizations uh, including the best of digital organizations you know um, to to get to a market especially in india right which is just a uh, collection of multiple continents if i may say right so so even within languages there are so many nuances of uh, uh, you know, the, the context in which you tell the story to the consumer. And uh, whether it is a digital brand or an offline brand, um, that level of personalization makes or breaks, you know, the case in terms of uh, the final objective achievement. Right, right, right. Ms. Naidu, uh, asking uh, you this uh, same question, you know, what is the rule book, uh, the playbook, uh, the new uh, playbook at work when it comes to addressing and uh, targeting uh, consumers in the right way using technology and content, is there a new rule book at all? And what is it? So it's on mute, I guess, yeah. Uh, more than the rule book, uh, it's the stance of the organizations uh, across that uh, has been taken. So somebody spoke about what are you delivering during this pandemic in this nine months, right? So the brands have to deliver value, they have to deliver trust, and they have to deliver empathy. And for them to deliver these three things, you have to believe in that. And everything else that you do emancipates itself, manifests itself into what you call it content or brand yeah. or outreach, right? That's that's the basis mood point. Uh, we all know that um, content as we knew it has undergone so much of change. Mm. But if you add these three, four lenses to the new normal, uh, as we call it, though I hate the term because it's so done to death. But uh, but uh, if you look at the, the realities that surround us today, if, you, if your content is not delivering value, trust and empathy, uh, thinking from the shoes, from the point of view of your customer, it is not going to resonate. As they say, real resonates. Uh, right. Storytelling, that is why, has become mainstream, which was never the case. Storytelling is a mainstream. Storytelling today is uh, has been proven to be an art science which delivers commerce. Uh, so so that's the, my stance on storytelling, which is a very human thing. If you add the AR and the VR and the AIs of the world, it kind of mm. becomes our tools or the vehicles to deliver those emotions to your to your customers. So, so that is the second um, second point. The third is right. more from from uh, from upgrade point of view because you asked what have we been doing. 
um, like Rahul said, that during the pandemic, we have done a lot of free courses because we understood that a lot of people are losing their jobs. That's where our empathy mm. comes into play. That um, we say, it's all right, we will make money. But you know, right now, let me help you with some just-in-time mm. learnings, which will help you to learn and make sure that you're relevant. So for, for us, like I have been saying, content has so many different faces. If you look at the brand campaign part of it, whether it is the whole donkey ad that we did, which got us a lot of uh, um, lot of media and a lot of virality, where we we were called out that you know um, uh, don't lick ass, kick ass. Uh, now for an ed tech brand, um, that was that was a stance that we took: love us, hate us, but don't be indifferent to us. So that was from the emotion point of view that everybody feels that that like, I don't want to be an ass licker, uh, but have we said it? Uh, no ed tech brand has said it, and we did it. Uh, if you look at the whole motivational content, um, that can I motivate? Right. Because you can give everything to everybody, but till the time the person does not have the aspirations, you're not going to uh, move mountains. So what can we do? So the whole thing, Aage Ki Soch, where we created this UGC-led um, anthem. If you look at um, if you look at our pedagogy course, the whole blended learning. We're getting, we're doing courses with so many international universities. Technology comes to our rescue or to our be our strength in every possible way. We are doing so many right. live lectures. We are doing so many webinars. We are doing so many blended learning. We are kind of curating the whole simulated learning uh, as per the aspirational job kind. So mm -hmm. it's going hand in hand. And uh, the two, uh, like I said, technology is a, is a creator, not a disruptor. You have to learn to mm -hmm. live with technology and make it a complementing factor. So, yeah. Right, right. Mr. Biswas, uh, you heard the panelists before you talking about the contextuality of messaging and the emotional tone that they took. Mm -hmm. Tell me, how did you use the content and tech to address that uh, environment around us uh, that we had, you know? So we basically focused on two things during the pandemic. Uh, number one being our business model is slightly different from the business models of delivery or business models uh, wherein the customer, the, the service provider doesn't enter the household, right? For a brand like house gen, the service provider is entering the household, the engagement level is far higher. So the trust level needs to be far higher for which we disseminated content around the safety aspect. And we also ensure through our app, our customer gets to know simple things like what is the temperature of the service provider who is visiting their home, right? Is he fit enough to visit the home or not? Just to build that trust. Also around the same time, we also ensured that if the customer, the service provider is not well, it doesn't seem to be well, the customer has the right to reject the service provider, just to add that level of trust and relevance for the brand. In addition to this, we also, around the same time, we realized uh, given that the service providers were not allowed to travel, because we'd never, uh, we'd not fall in the essentials category. Uh, we started doing DIY videos, wherein small hacks, right, uh, which make sense for the customer. So we also have a beauty vertical, uh, wherein we provide beauty services at home. So small hacks, which uh, a lady or a guy sitting at home can take care of, a haircut, how it is to be done, right? Some funny content around that, which also had a lot of engagement. We tried this, and this has worked uh, well for us. Uh, we have also tried changing the way we look at the metrics of uh, content and how content is judged. Right? Uh, earlier, it was only about views. Now, after the pandemic, we have realized uh, for a brand like us, we don't believe in spending uh, and just for the sake of GMV or revenue. We try building sustainably and we are almost at a breakable level right now. What we have believed is uh, content that uh, makes sense for the customer, where the customer is sharing the content with his or her friends. So we look at shareability as one of the most important engagement parameters for us. Uh, and also we have divided content for us into three, four different buckets. So as I spoke about useful content or content that is a customer can, uh, that is kind of changing the world, which is trying to engage the customer in a slightly emotional manner or, the, or trying to celebrate the customer's life. We have content with different buckets and tried creating content on that, and we have seen good response from that. Right, right, right. Uh, Mr. Agarwal, uh, you bring in a different perspective, as you said earlier as well. Uh, 
have there been any new solutions when it when it comes to uh, contextual messaging you know with an emotional awareness that brands are looking so for in this during this pandemic period and which it seems is going to prolong for some time mm-hmm. have there been new solutions around mm. yeah so ruhel i think um, during this entire pandemic uh, what has happened for the last 9 months and uh, may- maybe continuing for the next few months as well is that everyone uh, in business has got a pause and a lot of time to kind of uh, look inward because most of the times we we were generally as brand guys or content marketing guys we we are distracted with the external world we uh we keep looking outward and we keep looking outward for solutions whether it is through events or digital media or maybe conferences etc cetera, etc cetera. but during the pandemic the only tool which you had for marketing was was around content and how do you distribute your content uh most of the other things were not really uh, not really practical uh, so that was the only choice now but this this has led to uh, some goods and bad so it is kind of a double edged sword here uh, because everyone is now having lot of time as well as uh, content as the only choice uh, internet is littered with content i mean everyone everyone feels like i am doing great content but is it is it the content for google or is it the content for the customer that is a question which every brand should ask because see there are there are various ways to hack google algorithm uh you can uh, and and google can always keep a step ahead but uh, a brand manager will always go step ahead than google to find those hacks and that is how this entire push and pull works in uh, digital marketing now right the problem is that how do you really break this litter and uh, how do you do more quality and less of quantity uh right. because because everyone thinks like he is a he is a javed akhtar he can write beautiful content and verses but not uh and especially i'm talking about the b2b context because our target audience is generally the cxos of the world which who don't care about uh, content which is very shallow i mean the content has to be really really deep so what we did in in this entire pandemic is that how can we create very deep content which is written by experts uh how can we give very insightful content which is not like my me too kind of a content but which really adds value to the consumer apart from adding value to google algorithms uh right. and how can we use the entire philosophy of less is more rather than more is more because you can bring very good impact by doing less content but very very awesome quality so right, right. that has been that really? has been our learn uh and and that has been our differentiator during the pandemic that let's create awesomeness in content rather than just just pushing it out yes right absolutely wonderful words and uh, uh, i have another 5 or 7 minutes to go i want to fit in as many questions hopefully my next question is uh, you know in a world of ar vr ai big data where does empathy figure and how do brands build that in you know we are targeting con- uh, customers and minutely looking at them looking at data where does empathy uh, factor in and how do you enable it mr gandhi starting from you yeah we we at our uh, root are a very empathetic brand you know i think uh, firstly to the best way to be empathetic is to be true to yourself and to the consumer yeah so if i I'll, i'll speak like a food company should if i'm marketing healthy products they right. better be healthy yeah if i'm marketing no preservative chemical free uh, you know all these kind of products not only should i uh, be uh, you know true to that but the safety and hygiene factors that i should be following uh, right from the factory then to the vans that are going and delivering to the way my uh, products are kept in the store i should be true to it you know that's the best way to uh, you know uh, uh, be empathetic is to actually be true to yourself and be an empathetic brand uh, the other way to do it is that you know empathy is not something that you know is is marketable if you're an empathetic brand if you actually are an empathetic person who's devising uh, uh, solutions for the consumers thinking in and bearing in mind you know what are the support and help that the consumers need the consumers will give give you back long term uh, right 
you educate the consumers on what uh, uh, healthy food habits are you engage them in creative ways and you entertain them somehow the consumer will actually trust you back uh, so um, i think covid 19 is uh, uh, it's, it's going to stay here for a while you know and its impact will be uh, felt for many years um, but uh, the uh, unfortunate reality as as it may be you know as a as a marketer what we could do is we should make sure that the we keep the customers like we keep our wives you know, right safe right. healthy and so Yeah. Right. Uh, so you've been saying that much, yeah. You know, uh, you can keep them safe, healthy. You said wives and children. I think uh, yes. we should uh, go out of style. So we should, we should, we should create. We should uh, uh, be true to ourselves as 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 brands and individuals, and we keep uh, customers uh, like our wives, and and they should be happy. You know. Um, and, that, and that's that's what I think. Yes, Mr. Sethi, your approach and how do you factor this in? yeah i'll i'll uh, stay away from keeping customers like wives <laughs> but uh, i think uh, you know for us again you know uh, picking up from what rahul also said uh, uh, what is the true value for the of the brand right and the purpose of the brand and how does that connect with the some of the human values you know of the people around you right for for us for example uh, fashion is a great enabler for a lot of people it is an enabler for uh, building confidence it is an enabler to open new doors it's an enabler to present yourself you know um, with a with a much more uh, uh, i would say you know uh, confidence is one word but in a much more empowered manner or at least whether you are presenting to others or presenting to yourself uh, in front of a mirror and feeling that empowerment internally uh, fashion has a big role to play and i think across Uh, generations we have seen whenever there has been a big depression uh, there has been something culturally which has evolved and led to an evolvement on fashion right lipsticks were evolved like that you know uh, short skirts were evolved like that right so so uh, fashion and culture are so deeply tied to each other now for us when we think about any piece of content and it doesn't matter you know whether it has to go to multiple segments or uh, how we target it i think the idea and the philosophy is number one is it being helpful to the customer and different customers have different paradigms of what helpfulness means for some being highly valuable from a pricing perspective is being helpful for some being inspirational in terms of okay you know what just opening my eyes okay this is also possible is being helpful and for some you know very very uh, coaching or mentoring uh, sort of role where you tell them okay uh, with hacks with diys and these are the five ways of you know creating a budget free look or or a budget uh, budget look is uh, going to be helpful right so you you figure out what is being helpful to the customer and then ask that question each time that a piece of content gets created is does that meet that criteria um, second is i think uh, you know also uh, manoj made a good point is it's not about volume it's about uh, you know making sure that the quality as well as the context in which you are making that conversation with the consumer um is very well articulated in the beginning and that's why i mentioned in the beginning right starting with the objective right so if if you're talking to a cxo the objective of the campaign is very different it is right at the last level they will want to go off the funnel where they would want to move from intent to consideration to actually deep evaluation versus people right. when you are building a brand talking to new customers i think awareness is the first thing you will look at and at that time i think the message has to be extremely simple and 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 very very high level for people to just appreciate that okay you play a meaningful role in my life and at some later point in time i'll come and sort of talk to you uh, and at that point i'll engage that customer with a different kind of content which is far more nuanced right so those are some of the right. things at least we look at as mintra which is how can we be more helpful and use fashion as an enabler for our audience right right uh may miss naidu uh, your thoughts on uh, building uh, uh, in a world of deep tech high tech uh, Uh, how do you uh, ensure i mean you spoke about the campaign which kind of voice the emotions but how do you uh, build it always and keep that uh, mindset of you know empathy first yeah i think empathy uh, empathy has to be lived uh, and delivered more than uh, anything else and once you live it and when you deliver it 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 shows like i said real resonates right so uh, it's a very important aspect while like i said earlier that technology whether it is deep tech or the uh, or any form of technology will only be a vehicle to transport what your thoughts are 
uh, empathy uh, for different brands mean different things. Uh, we being in ed tech and uh, we are responsible brand first of all. Uh, like Rahul said, that if it is food, it better be authentic, and if it does not have preservative, it better not have preservatives. The same logic is for all brands, and um, education and learning um, is the most uh, sacred. And I will use this word with a lot of responsibility, because you are dealing with uh, people's future. You are dealing with people's livelihood. Their kids and their families' life depends on the kind of education that they will have. So uh, we have to be very, very responsible, uh, along with being empathetic, because we all know that the intent is there. People are being extremely insecure about their jobs, rightly so, because of technological change and pandemic. So lack of time, lack of money are the two biggest problem areas. But I have an intent, but I don't have time. I don't have money. How do then a brand like us respond to these realities of my TG? by being an empathetic brand and that's why all the things that that i told the whole free courses the 10k courses um, you know uh, b towns uh, that's again something uh, that we have penetrated and i did not speak about it but um, sadly most of the marketeers and most of the brands when they are talking to uh, about their product when they are talking to b uh, b towns they don't uh, they don't have customized solution they just juxtapose the same solution to them. But the, the people in BNC towns do not have similar real, realities. Case in point being, uh, during this pandemic and before, girls of BNC towns uh, had aspirations. They wanted to go out of their town, but they could not go out for various reasons. Now, because it's now a, a you know, fenceless world, uh, suddenly the whole online reality has come to them because their brothers or their neighbors who are boys are also learning online and they say, hey, I don't need this limitation in my life just because I can't go to, to a next district level or a city level office. So, so I'm saying at so many levels, empathy is at play. You have to understand your TG so well. You have to understand the pain points of your user so well. We talk about user journey and we talk about all kinds of journeys. But do we ever feel their journey? Do we ever live their journey? So brands need to do that in a real sense rather than make it as a part of their marketing strategy. Absolutely wonderful. I think uh, understanding uh, customer touch points is not just about data, but also about emotional, the way they can consume brands. Uh, Mr. Biswas, your, your thoughts on this? Uh, how do you... Uh, kind of listen to consumers, if I have to say this, and build in a certain connect which is empathetic. I, I think empathy is not only, uh, should be a, a value meant for consumers. It's, it's until unless the whole organization is empathetic towards its employees or uh, it's a part of the value system, it's difficult to be only empathetic towards customers, right? So I would like to cite certain things which we had done internally as well, like taking care of our uh, because uh, construction as well as uh, on-demand business, if they don't fall under uh, essential services. So for those three months of lockdown, we ensured that we tied up with Give India, we tied up with a couple of other NGOs to provide for the construction workers who had almost lost everything. They are daily wage earners. We also started a couple of other businesses like Hauja Mart, and, uh, which also ensured that the service providers get something to earn. Right. So. One, on one side, we ensured the service providers are earning something by delivering the, uh, the groceries. On the other side, uh, we reached out to our customer base and provided, uh, targeted mainly the slightly uh, aged customers who find it difficult to go out of their homes during that time and targeted them so that they can use the service. In addition to this, I think more, another most important aspect of empathy is uh, not being product or service focused, but understanding what benefit that service is providing the customer. So trying to understand what is the customer gaining out of it and talking in that language. So fake safety is, as I had earlier pointed out, safety was one of the most important factors between that. Uh, previously, one of my previous experiences was on uh, the kitchenware segment, where uh, selling a non-stick pan versus selling a pan which is not carcinogenic in nature is very different. So we used to highlight what's the most important aspect customer is caring for. Customer wants to, uh, based on say keywords or whatever, and trying to target those, uh, which I think is is helps, which helps, and which which has shown good results as well. So I, that's my take on it. 
Perfect. Uh, last words, uh, Mr. Agarwal, uh, how do you see this? Yeah, I think um, as Arpan mentioned that uh, uh, empathy has to be lived right from the DNA of the company and then transferred into the customers and your suppliers. Uh, because then only you will be able to actually uh, leave the value with, with your customers. If you don't practice it internally, you can't practice it externally. Now, when it comes to how you show empathy, uh, there are different ways. And uh, especially from a B2B perspective, a uh, lot of things which we do is in terms of proactive support that instead of waiting for the customer to come to you uh, because of certain issues, can you be proactive enough to kind of inform the customer? Because um, if you look into the Indian context today, I mean, apart from pandemic, there are several other issues like somebody is seriously ill, there are issues in the family, or there is a cyclone out there, uh, somebody's electricity is gone suddenly. So instead of uh, waiting for the customer to get irate and uh, shout at you, can you be a little more proactive saying that he, uh, there is a downtime for my servers today at uh, 2 to 4 p.m. And uh, please expect uh, some uh, some downtime in, in those hours. Similarly, uh, how can we add a human support to a lot of AI and NLPs which we do? So, and, and, and this is something which every consumer would have faced that they, they are talking to a bot and then the bot is not able to answer their queries and they get stuck. And they are running from pillar to post. They they what's they do some whatsapp in some groups that hey i can i get the uh, contact of the hod of this particular company and i i am stuck in a uh, problem so how can uh, how can brands add a human touch to their bots and customer support so that uh, the customer is not only relying on those uh, ai algorithms and right. uh, and then from a B2B context, again, how can you make your product so very simple that it is it is easy to use, it is easy to onboard. Uh, there are various ways uh, of uh, onboarding your customers in a very easy way so that, again, uh, you show empathy right from your product onboarding till the time the customer is consuming that product. And each, each right. touch point has to be checked in depth uh, that, yes, uh, I am empathetic to the consumer need here. Right, right. Thank you so much. I think we're out of time and uh, Ms. Naidu has a meeting at 7. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Gandhi, Mr. Satya, Ms. Naidu, uh, Mr. Biswas, Mr. Agrawal for joining us. Thank you. Hope to see Thanks, you. Thanks, Will. Thank you, everyone.